Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a very highly requested video. I'm going to share with you my holy grail skincare. And as many of you know, I'm constantly testing new skincare. I have tried almost every single SK2 product on the market and I have worked my way through tons of skincare brands over my lifetime. So I started with Shiseido as a teenager and have worked my way up. So I'm going to share with you my holy grail skincare items, the ones that I really cannot live without. And I'm going to start with the cleansers and even though this is my holy grail series, I do have pretty much two in every category that I really cannot live without. So just warning you, this is going to be a long video. First are my cleansing oils and I'm huge on removing makeup. So I like to remove my makeup and then actually wash my face. So I like to use two of these. These are the Tasha Pure One Step Camellia Cleansing Oil. I absolutely love this one. It's really expensive though. I have a bunch of notes here for pricing. This is five ounces for $48, whereas the Shumora Anti-Oxy is 15.2 ounces for $77. So this is a bargain buy in comparison to the Tasha, but I absolutely love the Tasha because it has a really thick gel texture that's really easy to use and I think it's less intimidating than the thinner traditional cleansing oils. This one does feel slightly like a gel but the Tasha is best for those who are just starting out with a cleansing oil who are kind of irked by the idea of using an oil. So I really highly recommend this one. It emulsifies a little bit better and the creamy and rich gel texture really makes it easy to use. So I really love both of these but I do think that the Shiomura is more economical and if if you are a pro cleansing oil user, then you probably feel like this is enough. Now for my top two cleansers, pretty much everything that I'm going to show in my holy grail is from SK2, Clé de Peau, La Mer, etc. So it is pretty pricey stuff and that, again that's why I'm doing the affordable options at the very end of this video. Again this video is going to be incredibly long but just stay tuned or fast forward. So my favorite gentle cleansing foam is by Clé de Peau and this is the newest to join my holy grail ranks. I've only used this for about two and a half weeks or so, but the first time I used it, I had the angel singing moment. It has a really truly gentle formula. It's super plush, silky, smooth, and it doesn't strip my face whatsoever. I have normal to dry skin. Probably should have mentioned that earlier. I have normal to dry skin with dryness around the cheeks here. I can have dryness around my nose and flaky bits here and there. I have some hormonal acne, some pimples occasionally, but I only have some acne scarring left over from my really bad bout of cystic acne last year from waxing. So never wax your face. Learn your lesson from me the hard way. So before that, I never had acne. Even as a teenager, it was really minimal, so I never had acne-prone skin. I still don't have acne-prone skin, minus the aforementioned hormonal pimples. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's helped me figure out what acne products work and what don't, so now I can recommend them to you. Okay, so anyway, going back to the cleansers, I really love the Clé de Peau cleansing foam because it is truly the most remarkable cleansing foam I've ever used. It is kind of expensive, it's $63, but a little goes a long way, and it's like the Shiseido and Equitance cleansing foams on steroids. It just feels so, so luxurious, and I really don't have those angel singing moments very often anymore, just because I've tried pretty much everything under the sun, <laughs> but I will say that the Clé de Peau is pretty amazing. So now for a cleansing gel. This is the La Mer cleansing gel, and some people with normal to dry skin find this too drying, but actually I find it really refreshing. So when I've had a long day and I've worn a lot of makeup like when I film, or if it was just super sweaty outside, or if I took bow on a hike, then I like to use the cleansing gel because I really feel like it really has a cooling texture and it's just really plush for a cleansing gel. So I highly recommend this, especially if you have normal to oily skin. And now finally, moving on to toners. So most of you know by now that the SK2 Facial Treatment Clear Lotion is probably one of my favorite skincare products ever. And this is the product that helped me normalize my T-zone and I went from combination oily skin to normal dry skin. Some people don't think it's that effective, other people say it makes them break out, but I have sensitive skin and this has never made me break out. It's really gentle but effective. So I highly recommend this one because it's alcohol free. Next up is my Shiseido 
Udermine, and this is $56, whereas this is $70, so it's a little bit cheaper. And the Shiseido is awesome because it makes my skin feel really, really soft. So I feel like the SK2 is more of a clarifying toner. It really makes my skin feel clean, whereas the Shado, Shiseido Udermine is more of a plush toner. It makes my skin feel really, really supple and soft. So I love both of these toners for different reasons. I tend to use the SK2 in the morning and the Shiseido at night. Now for Essence, I am continuing this pattern of twos here, sorry. <laughs> I like both equally. It just really depends on your skin type and your preferences. Skincare is super personal, so Something that I love may not work for you, but hey, it's always worth a shot, right? So here we have essences, and these are literally liquid serums. So they're in between a toner and a serum. So I use two. I use the SK2 Facial Treatment Essence, and I use the LXP by SK2 as well. So the regular essence I use when I have breakouts. When, I, when my skin feels more sensitive, and I use the LXP when my skin is feeling more dry. This is a lot more rich, and it actually even feels heavier in your hand, in your palms. I douse this on my palms and then tap it into my face, so I can definitely feel the weightiness of this formula. The regular formula is a little bit lighter, it has more of a sake scent, whereas the LXP is scent free. So I love both, this one's a lot more expensive, so if you're just starting out, I highly recommend using the SK2 regular FTE. And for those who have asked me this question in the past, yes, I do notice a difference now that I have added the FTE to my facial treatment clear lotion as well as additional serums. It just makes my skin more soft, more radiant, and people always tell me, you, you know, because I complain about my scarring to makeup artists and my friends, and everyone tells me, but your skin looks so plump and it has vitality, you know, I still have my collagen and everything, even after my really, really terrible acne. So I feel like, you know, SK2 has made the most difference in my skin. So now we're going to move on to my moisturizers. First, I'm going to start with my daytime moisturizers, and then I'm going to move on to my nighttime moisturizers. So the difference is that my daytime moisturizers have SPF, and when I had combination to oily skin, I avoided these kind of moisturizers like they were the plague. Now, I absolutely love them. I can't live without them. I wear these and then add sunscreen on top, so I'm really big on sun care. So these are my two favorites. So when I have less dry skin, it's more normal skin. I use the Gentle Protective Emulsion from Clay de Peau, and this has a sunscreen of S, um, an SPF of 22. So I love this because it's light, it's silky, it does have a slight white cast to it, but I love how quickly it absorbs and it makes my skin feel so baby soft. So I really love this for the way it makes my skin feel. And sometimes I use the Shiseido Future Solution LX, and this is also fairly recent to my collection as well, but my skin has been feeling a lot more dry recently. I just got back from Beijing, so the travel made my skin kind of yo-yo a little bit, so it's feeling a little bit more dry than it should, and this has helped a lot. So this one's $240, whereas the Clay de Peau is, let me check my list, it is $130. So there is a pretty hefty difference, and I feel like if you have really dry skin, this is definitely a luxurious treat. This is better if you have combination to normal skin. Now for my favorite two nighttime moisturizers. I have been using the SK2 Stem Power for quite a long time. In America, it's called Essential Power, but it's the same thing. It's just called Stem Power in Asia, and I have the Asian version with Japanese writing on the back. So I love this cream because it is the best anti-aging moisturizer that I've ever used. It absorbs quickly, it doesn't have a funky scent, it just works. It makes my skin look and feel more plump, more firm. The Chantecaille Rose de Maya Cream is pretty freaking fabulous. I discovered this during the Glam 100 Awards when I was a judge, and I was so excited. It was a really fun event, and I fell absolutely in love with this. It has a really quickly absorbing texture. It just makes my skin look so luminous and healthy. And for those who prefer more, prefer more natural skincare, the Shantikai is the way to go. This is a pretty hefty investment. This is about $210. I think the Stem Power may even be a little bit more. I, I forgot to write down the price of this one. But the Shantikai is really awesome if you're a little bit younger and you're afraid to use a really hefty 
you know, power player, like the Stem Power Cream. So I highly recommend the Shantikai for all age types. It has a slightly herbally rose scent, which I was not a fan of at first, but the texture just won me over. So I absolutely love everything about this cream now, and I use this most often during my hormonal stages. So if you have acne, I feel like this really calms down the skin, and it actually makes your redness less visible. So definitely give this a shot. Now we're going to move into the treatments, or serums. So let's begin with the 3Lab Super H Serum and in combination these are what really helped contribute to my now normal skin. And when I got from combination skin to normal skin a lot of people ask me what is it? So it's pretty much a combination of hormones, aging, and products. So for me, I know that these two products really work because I use them together and they were pretty much all that I was using at one point because the Super H Serum is so, so amazing. So again, this clarified my skin after cleansing, but the 3 Lab Super H Serum is probably the best anti-aging serum I've ever used. It's super light, so if you have combination or oily skin, it's perfect for you because it's great for minimal coverage. I know a lot of those with oily and combination skin don't like to layer too much skincare, but this one's super light, super fast absorbing. And if you have dry skin, it's great because you can layer lots more products on top of it without your skin feeling like it's being weighed down by product. So either way, it works universally well for all skin types and all skin concerns. It helps with dry patches, wrinkles, aging. It just helps with everything. And when I use this at the very tail end, of my acne experience when my skin was purple from healing scars. It was really, really awful. I could barely look in the mirror. It was almost worse than having active red acne because the scars are just so deep and so purple. But ultimately, I do feel like this 3Lab serum is what kept my skin looking as healthy as possible. It helped my purple scars fade as quickly as possible. And I, I do feel like even though this serum is the most expensive that I've used thus far, it's definitely worth another purchase. And since I have used this up, I will be getting another bottle because it is that phenomenal. And now for my two favorite serums that aren't anti-aging. So these are both whitening products and I'll start with the Aura or Aura Bright. This essence or serum is meant to be used all over the face and this is the only product that I've ever used thus far that actually whitens my face. So after four weeks, I used this both morning and night and it made my face so much fairer that I had to buy foundations one shade lighter. So this product really, really works. It makes your skin brighter, it makes it more luminous, and it just really, really works. So I highly recommend this because it really does exfoliate the skin, the cell turnover is quicker. This is not a hydrating serum, however, so I highly recommend layering if you have normal to dry skin. You have to put something more hydrating on top. So this is actually really, really good for oily and combinations skin and I just feel like it's one of the most powerful whitening treatments out there. If you don't want whiter skin, if you fake tan and you don't want to lose that effect, then try the whitening, the Power Spot Specialist instead. But overall, if you're looking for a more radiant skin tone, then definitely look for this product just because it does work. Now going back to the Power Spot Specialist, this is actually one of SK2's most hydrating products in my opinion. And I really love this one for acne scarring, it works a lot more slowly than this illumination aura because obviously scars take a lot more time to heal. And you'll probably have to use one full bottle, if not a second, to really see results. But healing scars with a cosmetic product doesn't really come easily, so you just have to stick it out. And I feel like it does work. It's made my scars lighter for sure, so I really, really love this. And I feel like of all the scarring products that I've tried, because it is so hydrating, it does work a little bit better. And now for my favorite eye cream, which is the Stem Power Eye Cream. So so this just launched in Asia, but I've actually been using it for the last three or four months and I really, really love it because it is the perfect eye cream for me. I don't have any eye wrinkles. I do have some fine lines from laughing and, you know, nature. <laughs> it's natural to have some fine lines, but overall I don't really have any issues with wrinkles, but the Stem Power is perfect because it has 
just the right amount of moisture. So the FTE Eye is a little bit too light for me and I feel like the Signature, even though in the winter I really love it, I feel like all year round the Stem Power Eye Cream is perfect because it hydrates, it smooths, but it doesn't make my skin feel weighed down and it doesn't cause any milia whatsoever. So I highly recommend this. I'm not sure when it's launching in the United States, but it has launched in Asia. So if you have friends that live out there or travel to Asia, then definitely ask them to pick this up because it has a really, really wonderful, smooth, creamy texture. And to wrap up the everyday skincare that I use, I have my Evlom sunscreen. This is the Daily Protection SPF 50, and this is one of the best sunscreens that I've ever tried. So if you have normal to dry skin, you're going to absolutely love this. If you have combination to oily skin, it might be a little bit too dewy for you. So I'll have, I'll recommend other things at the affordable section of this video. But the Evlom is just so wonderful because it makes my skin look and feel amazing. And it works so incredibly well with one of my top five foundations, which is the new Sizzly foundation. I have a top five foundations video and I will link it here in case you're interested in it. But the Evlom works amazingly well with the Sizzly. Every time I wear the Evlom and the Sizzly together, people ask me in videos, what are you wearing? Your skin looks so luminous and dewy. So yeah, I absolutely love this. And now we are moving on to masks. So I love masks and these are my absolute favorites. So this first we have the SK2 Derm Revival Mask, which I've talked about before. This mask was introduced to me by my mother. It's her favorite mask and I am a convert now. It just hydrates, plumps, it actually reduces redness. When I had a big cystic acne pimple here, it was super red and throbbing, but after I used this mask, it was much smaller. You could barely see it anymore. So I really, really love this. I think it works so well. It has a thicker gel consistency, not quite as tacky as the traditional SK2 facial treatment mask. That's great for moisture, but this does more. It makes my skin plumped, more even toned, and it just soaks into the skin really, really well. So I highly recommend this. I use that all the time when I'm flying. And yes, I'm one of those crazy people that uses a paper mask on a plane. I have no shame, okay? <laughs> now for another facial mask. This is a relatively new skincare brand. This is One One Skin, but this is a biocellulose facial treatment mask. And I will admit, I like the SK2 mask just a tad bit better but this one also brightens and moisturizes as well so I feel like they recommend you use this up to three times a week so this is better for everyday use whereas this is best for a special event or when you're flying or traveling so definitely give both of these a try now for my favorite eye mask this is by Tasha just like the cleansing oil I talked about in the very beginning these are the deep hydration revitalizing eye masks I absolutely love Tasha's packaging, but I really love these because they're super hydrating and they really do make my eye area plumped up. So if I have fine lines from lack of sleep, dehydration, this cures it all. So I love these. I highly recommend you give them a try. And finally, let's talk about the affordable skincare that I recommend. So the Kate Somerville D-Scar is a pretty amazing product. I think out of all the affordable skincare that I'm going to show you today, this is my favorite. I love the applicator. It has a metal roller ball and you just squeeze the product out and apply it so it has a cooling effect and the serum itself seems to be working. I've only used it for four days now but I feel like it's working already so I highly recommend this one and especially since the SK2 whitening spot specialist is pretty expensive I think the Kate Somerville is a better alternative if you are looking for something more budget friendly. Now for masks. I'm really big on masks these days so I'm just going to talk about these. This is the Cremor Lab White Bloom Triple Bright floral mask and this is also a brightening mask it's super refreshing it's hydrating not quite as hydrating as the sk2 or the 111 skin masks by any means but it is a pretty good mask for the price and i like this because it smells nice the cotton is exceptionally thin i like really thick plush cotton but this is a really interesting mask and I think that I'll try more of these in the future just because they are a really good alternative to using masks every day. Some women use masks every day. That would probably make me go broke but I feel like these Cremor Labs are inexpensive enough where you can use them really often. So this one's a good one and it's from peachandlily.com. They have the best selection of Korean skincare if that's what you're looking for. And now for my favorite affordable mask, this is by Etude House. And this is probably the only Etude House product that I like. I've tried a bunch of it thus far and I really don't think any of it's that good, especially considering it has rave reviews online. But the Collagen Eye Gel Patch is really, really good for the price. I think it is probably one of the best 
budget skincare products I've ever found. And I have to thank my friend Nayong for this because she's the one that recommended it to me. So these gel patches feel really cooling on the eyes. They actually do work. The effect is a lot more temporary than with something like the Tasha eye, pa eye patches, but I feel like for the price, you can't really go wrong with this. Now for an affordable cleanser. This is the Equitons Brightening Foaming Cleanser. And prior to finding the La Mer Cleansing Gel and the Clay de Peau Cleansing Foam, this was my favorite. I was using this day and night because it's really that wonderful. And this is only $30 compared to the a lot more expensive products that I use every day now, but I feel like this is a great product for the price. It's not too drying, it doesn't strip the skin, and whether you have oily skin or combination skin or normal skin or dry skin, you can use this product. So definitely give this a shot. And the Equitons Brightening Toner is also really good as well. And now for another toner, so this is the Be The Skin Botanical Nutrition Power Toner. This is also a Korean product, and I really love this for all skin types as well. The Equitons Brightening Toner is great since it does brighten, but this one is more of a nutritional toner. It really makes your skin feel moisturized and healthy and plump. And if you have dry skin, you definitely want to give this a try. It's only $29, so it won't set you back too much, and it's a pretty good amount of product. So I highly recommend this one if you're looking for a more moisturizing toner. Now for Essence, not only does this Myzon Mela Defense White Capsule Essence have a really cute bottle. I mean, it's pink packaging, come on, with flowers on it. It's really irresistible. This is a really affordable essence. So you use this after toner before any of your uh, any of your other serums. So if you use an anti-aging serum, you would use this first. So this is a really good alternative to the SK2 Illumination Aura. Just don't expect to see results nearly as quickly. Like I've mentioned before, I saw results with the SK2 four weeks after I first started using it, but I don't feel like the Myzon will give you the same results. This is only $34 and the SK2 product is $160. So that's a pretty big difference in price. And I think it shows it on my face. This is a power player. It gives phenomenal results. Whereas the Myzon is a much gentler formula, so you're going to have to use at least a full bottle or two to really see something significant. It does work, it does make my skin look and feel brighter, but it's not necessarily a whitening product the way the SK2 Aura is. Overall though, for the price, the packaging, the product itself, you really can't go wrong with it. It's $34, you know? So definitely give this one a shot. And this one is used after toner, before your other serums. And now we have the Cremor Lab Smooth Pudding, and this is actually a fairly, fairly good dupe, I would say, for the Shantikai Rose Demi Cream. I don't think I would find anything that replaces it, but at least it mimics, at least this Cremor Lab mimics the texture of it. It has a really lightweight finish, just like the Shantikai. It doesn't feel quite like a gel. It actually looks like a cream in the pot, but when you put it on your face, it really warms up and it just glides on. So that's why I do like this uh, smooth pudding face cream and I highly recommend it if you're looking for a more affordable version of the Shantikai. And now that we've discussed the Cremor Lab, which is similar to the Shantikai, now I'm going to talk to you about the Olay Regenerist Micro Sculpting Cream, which is similar <laughs> to the Stem Power. So this is an anti-aging cream and it lifts, it firms, and it does a lot of what the SK2 cream does, except it comes with a 40 dollar price tag which is a lot more affordable than the stem power and of course again it's not going to give you stem power results but it does have a really silky easy to apply texture it has a slightly floral scent and the stem power is fragrance free so if you're sensitive to fragrance definitely stick to the stem power but for 40 bucks you can't really go wrong with this anti-aging cream I feel like it's the best thing that you can find at your drugstore and now last but not least for this incredibly long video thank you so much for watching if you stayed with me thus far is the Shiseido sunscreen so this is the urban environment oil free sunscreen I've used the face cream in the blue tube for years Recently, I've been trying this one. I've used a full bottle of this before in college, but I feel like this is better for normal to combination and oily skin, which is why I'm showing this one, because I know a lot of my subscribers do have oily skin. I feel like because it has a water light formula, it absorbs faster and it dries down to a slightly, slightly powdery finish. So I feel like that works better on oily T-zones and for people who are just oily all over. Now, if you do have dry skin, use the blue tube, the Shiseido sunscreen 
cream because it's more moisturizing but overall I feel like the urban environment is a good place to start so I highly recommend you wear sunscreen all day every day even if you stay indoors and even if it's cloudy outside you must wear sunscreen so please remember to wear your sunscreen because that is the best way to prevent aging to prevent wrinkles and sunspots prevent the damage before it starts and with that being said that's a wrap so thanks so much for tuning in everyone and if you have questions I will try to get back to you as soon as possible sometimes it's hard for me to get to all the comments because I get a ton of questions especially regarding skincare but I'll do my best to get back to you so thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you soon bye